Hello, everyone. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everyone here. Um, Happy New Year and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Hasanatu Blake, and I am a digital health and ed tech professional, having worked for nearly 15 years leading technological supported opportunities for, for people to be educated on critical matters and to improve public health. I'm honored to moderate today's panel titled Empowering Women in Leadership Through Emerging Technologies. Today, we have a great panel from all over the world. They represent women who understand women's needs and leadership roles. Um, they are women who look like us and they are women who are committed to addressing those needs through emerging technology. So at this time, I will give our panelists just one minute each to introduce themselves and share why they entered or began in emerging technology space. Um, I Let's start with Allison. Well, thank you so much, Hasnati, for having me on this panel. I was hoping I'll be the last one, of course, to speak, but here we go. Uh, well, I'm Alison Chiwara, and I'm based in Scotland, UK, um, a mother of two, which is my most important job before anything else. And then followed by that is I am a co-founder of Flesway CIC, which is an ed tech um, hoping to cover globally. And what we do is we train young girls and women in 3D design modeling uh, in the VR spaces. And again, really taking advantage of those emerging technologies that women have never had the opportunity to, to sort of you know, jump into and really embrace. And so I'm really, really passionate about uh, female empowerment and, and really creating um, opportunities in spaces where I may find myself in or where I'm lucky to be included. Over and above that, I am also very passionate about mental health, especially in the workplace. I think that the pandemic uh, created such um, disruption, I think, in all of our lives. And again, my love for uh, technologies combined with that, and I love the use of neuroscience to combine and align, you know, stuff with, you know, company goals, etc. So really, really pleased to be here. And thank you very much. Allison, do you want to pass it on to the next person? Yeah, I am going to go for Chitra. <laughs> thank you so much, Allison. Hi, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you again, Gatherverse, for the opportunity to be a part of this. My name is Chitra. I am the CMO at Optimum Studio. We are a tech company based in Indonesia. We specialize in XR products and services. A lineup of what we do includes our 40 plus flashcards for children, which are interactive visual learning tools in different themes all the way to commercial projects with global partners such as Discovery Mindblown, the UK Space Agency and TCC Global, mainly in the creation of AR mobile apps and web AR solutions for businesses. Our studio projects highlight a web air platform called Argonauts, a virtual gallery platform called Artscape Digital, and an IP creation called Octoland. Um, that's my introduction. Should I pass the baton to someone else here? Okay, um, I'll pass it on to Gita. Thanks so much, Chitra. Uh, this is Gita Berry. I am the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Immersive Healthcare at Penabra. What that means is that I'm a healthcare person. So I have spent my career in medical devices and that's what has brought me to this kind of technology. Um, first, I developed things like catheters and coils and stents, the kind of things that go inside your body um, to help address different medical conditions. And now what we do at Penumbra in addition to those types of things is that we also bring technologies using virtual reality to patients, for example, in rehabilitation, patients with, that are facing different mental health challenges, 
things like anxious moods, depressed moods, right? Overall wellness. Um, and it's been such an incredible journey to bring that healthcare experience into this tech world. Um, in our roles, we have so many people who have helped us from their gaming backgrounds because we build our own content. We have our own software development. We also have our own hardware development. So we're really bringing all the different components of tech together in what we do inside of healthcare. And in, in addition to that, we're expanding that even more, which is where I think about this panel and the opportunities for us to help people well beyond when they are a patient, um, but also where we can help people be good people. And so this is our vision VR training, where we bring wellness to employees. We bring it to sexual harassment and discrimination prevention training. There are so many great ways by experiencing your experience, whatever that is. So whether that is experiencing what it is like to be discriminated against or to be bullied or to be in the middle of your rehab sessions, VR can help you do that in such a unique way. And there are so many ways for women to contribute to that experience. So I'm so blessed to be here. Thank you, Gatherverse. Thank you, Hasa. So nice to meet you all, everyone on the panel and looking forward to this discussion. Excellent. Gita, do you want to pass it on to someone else? Of course, how about I pass it to Alex? All right. Hi there, everyone. Thanks, Gita. Uh, I am Alex Pryor. I uh, am the uh, head of digital innovation for EOH, which is one of Africa's largest ICT service providers. Um, I've been in the IT and technology industry for 20 years, so I, uh, I come from a, a pure tech background. Um, and uh, I really have one of the coolest jobs in the world because I get to explore new tech and to really see how it can impact uh, the lives of our clients and lives of people um, within, uh, within South Africa and within Africa. And from that, I actually founded uh, a community, the, the Africa Web3 Revolution, which is really around promoting, celebrating and supporting businesses and people in emerging tech within an African context. And I'm really thrilled to be here today with uh, all of you amazing ladies. Um, and I will pass the baton on to Deborah. Thank you, Alex. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you to the organizers for this invitation and the opportunity to speak today. I'm Deborah Thompson, founder and executive director of a nonprofit called One Health Lessons. What we do at One Health Lessons is we educate kids, adults, and communities about One Health and what One Health is. I'll explain it in two different ways, the concept and the approach. The One Health concept is that connection between our health and the health of the environment, animals, and plants. Makes sense, right? Sick environment, sick people, sick animals, sick people, we're all connected. And then that One Health approach is just teamwork between people of different backgrounds, disciplined strengths. We come together and we solve some mighty health challenges. Um, with technology, what we at One Health Lessons have done is we've gone global within the first month alone, and it's because of technology. And we have an internship program with over 60 individuals. And honestly, I've only met three out of 69 individuals because of technology. So we'll talk more about that, but I will pass the mic over to Wadua. <laughs> Thank you so much and a uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you everyone for, uh, for allowing me to be here, for joining us. Uh, my name is Wadua Wali. I am the co-founder and chief strategy officer for New Canvas. And uh, New Canvas is a next generation XR media company that produces and publishes immersive content for the metaverse uh, for digi digital first audiences. Uh, and we have an unapologetic focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. Um, uh, why that matters is because, you know, we, it matters that we see ourselves in these spaces and uh, we see ourselves in entertainment, we see ourselves uh, in, in the world. And so I'm it's always considered myself a storyteller. So I've done storytelling across other platforms that have been in the past from your broadcast to online and, and now I'm super excited to be here um, building uh, a, a content company in the metaverse. And, uh, and I think it matters and, and why I am excited to be here is because um, I spent a lot of time, my, my last company, uh, Warner Media, Warner Discovery now, uh, talking about the importance of having um, diverse stories from diverse voices. And, uh, and that's kind of a correction from entertainment that's been around for 
you know, 100 plus years. And so it's, you know, I saw it as an opportunity to be here right now as the metaverse, as Web3 is being built to ensure that, you know, we have a place here and uh, there's a place for stories uh, to make sure that, that we're all represented. And uh, that's, uh, and we'll talk about more stuff later, but uh, that's just a little bit about me and a little bit about New Campus. What a phenomenal panel. Thank you ladies for, for being here today. Um, before we get started, I would like for us to set the stage a bit about the topic we're gonna ha we'll have a conversation about. So um, a little bit of background. Um, women play instrumental roles in supporting and also leading teams across the world, right? In 2019, uh, they have found, research has found that 29% of senior management roles were held by women and 87% of global businesses had at least one woman to fill leadership roles in technology and in innovation. Unfortunately, um, according to Catalyst study, structural and cultural barriers, which greatly vary across the world, often lead uh, women to also uh, take up responsibilities around caregiving and around, and around housekeeping. So as you can see, women are advancing, they're, they're being empowered in technology, but the advancement is a bit ambiguous. Some of the key barriers for women leaders are old stereotypes, about women, fewer connections and bias and discrimination, lack of flexibility and recognition, and also not being themselves or being able to be themselves without changing for the entity or the, the society that they live in. Fortunately, emerging technology could have that potential to have a profound effect in addressing those challenges that women leaders face. So, with a little bit of background, my first question to the panel is how can emerging technologies be used to break down some of those barriers and challenge traditional gender roles in leadership? And when you're thinking about that question and your response, I would love to hear a little bit more about how some specific uh, emerging technologies like the metaverse, Web 2.0, et cetera, are, are different from previous technology and how they also impact leadership for women. Anyone can jump in. This is open to the entire panel. So I, it's Gita, I've got a thought to share. So um, as we think about, and I, as I look at this in terms of emerging technologies, to me, emerging technologies are a tool, right? And these tools continue to help connect us. These tools allow us to connect in all different ways. Um, when we think about it, we're more of a healthcare company. We're, we're more about how do we help people in their environment so they can be successful in the real world. Um, and so what we see is a great opportunity, which will, we believe will help women and so many others, is the idea around can we put people in first person experiences? Um, the wonderful work that storytellers like Wadua and others have done is they've been able to tell us stories for many years, right? Incredibly different ways. I love what Wadua said about this opportunity to bring storytelling on this new medium. Um, we're doing that same thing with training. Um, and so the concept of, can I be in the seat of someone who has been bullied or discriminated against? And I actually feel it um, the same because we have storytellers helping tell those stories. It's a totally different way than if you're on your regular screen like this and you're watching something and it's a required video that is how do I avoid sexual or harassing, you know, sexually harassing someone or bullying someone. We can actually take advantage of the technology to help people feel it. And how does that help women? How does that help others who feel who may have not had those same opportunities? It helps people understand what does it feel like to be in their shoes? It helps people understand, hey, when I'm talking to someone in that situation, maybe I'm gonna approach it a bit differently because I had no idea what it felt like. Um, and so that's one way that I see this as an incredible opportunity. I'm sure other panelists see others, but from my perspective, that's one thing that we're focused on. Absolutely, and I just wanted to pick it up from, I mean, like how we see ourselves and, and the opportunity to tell things from a different voice. I mean, one of the criticisms of, you know, Web 2 versus, uh, you know, what what's being built in Web 3 is that, 
uh, Web2 was built by a lot of dudes and specifically a lot of white dudes. And so the experience is very much from that point of view. And so what's exciting about Web3 as um, is, is a chance to, like I was saying before with entertainment even, to correct those things so that it's not just um, a platform that's built for one specific person that we all have to pile into and learn to conform to and uh, you know, and so so with Web3 uh, and the metaverse, it's an opportunity for us to, uh, like, people love the idea of what's being built with these new platforms, these new tools, as Gita said, uh, is, uh, you know, transparency, it's openness, it's not it's not a, a repeat of, of what we've seen, in, what we've seen in the past. And so, um, so that's, the, you know, like the new and emerging technologies and uh, it provide that opportunity and that's why it's so important to make sure that that there are more um, people that are not just one type of person that are building it. Absolutely, and if I could maybe just add, if we think of Web 3.0 in the metaverse, it's, it's really all about the immersive web. Uh, and that's not so much about what actions you can take, but it's about your interactions. Uh, and in a world where you're interacting in a far more real way than we've ever been able to do before, it's a way for, as, as Gita was saying, around the, the almost softer side of it. Uh, and that's not to say that, uh, that women can't be hard and men can't be soft, but there, there are certain skills that I think are we almost naturally gravitate to. And those interactions, I think, is, is ripe for, for women to actually step forward and utilize the, that technology to kind of prove where their skills lie. For the first time, we have a technology that lets us do that. And especially because of the pandemic, we're in a far more global community. So for the first time, we, I can be sitting here in Africa and having a panel with people in Indonesia and the States uh, and in Scotland. And we're all together in this, this amazing sort of community that wouldn't have been possible even four or five years ago. And how we interact and how we move forward is the really exciting part for that. I love this. I love this. Um, based off of uh, some of your responses to that question, I really hear like a, a common theme of how emerging technology can really have an impact in really connecting women across different countries, cultures, industries, um, which is great. Um, I want to build on that and particularly um, shooting this question to Wadua um, specifically. How can we use emerging technology to issue to address issues around diversity, equity, inclusion? Um, you speak a lot about um, uh, a lot about the differences uh, that are are there in technology for women and and different types of women in the space. Um, how do you think emerging technology can can help us address those issues for women? Um, uh, thank you. That's a great question, and I I, I think it's it's just building off of uh, the, the previous answer of of making sure that um, that we are included in these spaces. I think that it helps us um, not only uh, be seen um, as people like changing the traditional roles that we have, that have been placed on us, or that you know like in th even throughout society that that we have inherited going into the workplace. I mean like. Uh, these tools can help us because we're 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 now we're not just moms and we're not just caretakers anymore. We're builders and we're innovators and we're rethinking the ways that these tools can be uh, utilized. And as Alex was saying, thinking more immersively, thinking more connectively, and and I think that those are um, you know I, I think that those are attributes that are that are placed on women more often than not that we we are considered to be more more warm and more connective. And so I think that's a huge opportunity to change the, the hardness and the or the um, the coldness of you know like the disconnected technologies and um, and so you know like using these tools and using new new technologies to to showcase us you know like not just as the the people in the in the backdrop but being um, out in front and um, and creating these things and and changing the paradigm. Anyone else want to add? Go ahead, Allison. You're on mute, Allison. 
I beg your pardon, technology playing tricks on me. Anyway, I'm back. <laughs> so yes, I just wanted to add on what the other ladies have already um, said in regards to what the emerging technologies have to offer in terms of breaking down barriers. I think for the first time, I want to take the words of our founder, Philosophers Florence, who said in our launching speech is that, you know, the metaverse in general really um, provides us with a clean canvas in which to actually operate from. I have never, uh, you know, dreamt of a world where as women, as uh, underestimated people where we can come in and actually start to draw the picture that we've had in our heads. And I think that this space allows us to be incredibly imaginative. And really, you know, I say to all of our students, we, as an ed tech, we're classroom without walls. And those walls you know, within the metaverse, there's absolutely no walls. You know, we're talking about collaboration, creating communities that, you know, I have met some incredibly amazing people within the Web3 space, never met them in real life. But again, as Jita was saying, is that the connections, the emotional connection that this space brings is enormous and almost unimaginable. And I get really excited about the the real possibilities, you know, when you look at EDI, you know, equality, diversity, and inclusion, this space has so much power. And so it has given me so much delight, actually, from watching yesterday, seeing so many incredible women in this space, driving this space into something that creates tangible impact. And, and so for me, that gives me so much hope that what we're not able to do in this space, in the real world, I think can be achieved in the metaverse. And if it's true that as time goes on, these lines will become blurred between real life, our physical life and our own life, then I think that this is going to be an amazing space and a real opportunity for any woman from any walk of life to really take on transferable skills into this sector. I have done, and I come as I was saying, I, my background really is um, corporate mental health. I got into here because of another woman that was already in this space. Collaboratively, we've been able to build this machine that is philosophers. I come in with different skill sets. And so technology really allows me as well to continue to research on this new world for me too. So I think that, um, the, the, I think the knowledge expansion is really also now very accessible. Unlike before, so again, technology, emerging technology, you know, sort of breaking down the walls that we've had before, where if I wanted to learn a certain piece of software, I really needed to go to uni or something to do it. But now this is all incredibly accessible. And I think that um, emerging technologies has a lot to, to do with the space that we find ourselves in. And I'm really excited for the future. And I want to continue seeing so many more women almost preaching the gospel, if you like, talking about this new space to other women. And I just hope that we all have a spirit of sharing so that the more women that hear about this space, the more dominant we become in this era. Thank you. And, and just one, I, I think uh, I keep hearing, you know, like the, the, the real world. And I think that what you're just talking about, about the accessibility, I, I think that, you know, like because these technologies are emerging and because we are so much more intertwined as people with these yeah. technologies, um, I think that, you know, thinking about this, not just in terms of, you know, in the real world, but this is an extension of what we do, you know, like the, the technology is just an extension of what we, who we are. So whether we're talking about walking, uh, walking around in, 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 a, in a house or walking around in the metaverse, it's just an extension. We're still real people. We're still, you know, it, it's not, it's not, uh, we're not distracted or, or detracted uh, from from what we do in the metaverse. So I do want to, I did just want to throw that out there that, you know, like, the, and that's what technology is enabling us to do. So if we're bad actors in the real world, we're going to be bad actors as that extension in the metaverse and web three. And so that's, um, that's another, you know, benefit and another way to think about, you know, like how we show up and, and what we're doing uh, as we're building these things. I just want to add to that this concept of what I think about as life in concentric circles. Um, and Alex, when we met earlier, I think gave a great example of this, of what, because it, it really comes down to what does diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging mean to you in your circle? Um, and I 
see so much of what we are doing. And even an event like this, I couldn't imagine being in an event like this pre-COVID because the accessibility of, just as we've been talking about with Allison and Wadua, none of this technology was pervasive enough that we would have been like, sure, of course, we're going to join this panel this way, right? But the incredible world of inclusion that this creates, because I've got an internet connection, electricity, and a computer that allows me to do this is totally different than the world when I think about diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging when I'm thinking about healthcare. And how do we knock down those barriers in healthcare? And if I think about that in each of the businesses and the, each of the sectors that we are all in, we probably have our own versions of what that looks like. But in the largest one of those circles, technology is helping us do this. Because I can't imagine when I was a woman, when I was a woman, I'm still a woman, I'm so sorry, right? But when I was coming out of school, right, when I was trying to choose my time in university, what was my degree going to be? How did I choose biomedical engineering? I thought it was going to be a fun way to get into medical school. I didn't end up getting into medical school because I didn't want to go that path. I decided I wanted to go a tech path because I loved the technology that I saw. But had I known that this whole world existed, I probably would have chosen something else. You never know, right? Thank goodness I'm in the space that I'm in. I love it. But there are so many more choices available to women because technology has knocked down those barriers to what can you actually learn about and know. And so I think that's another component and this latest round of technology is just going to keep knocking them down and help those circles get bigger and bigger, even though once we're in, like, where it might be in smaller circles on our day-to-day -day basis, it's things like this that demonstrate how big the circles can be. Yeah, I would like to um, say that, if that is okay. Because um, when I read this questions, I, I kind of sit with it and think about um, a few particular cases in my years of working at Optimus Studio, which elevate the way I view the tech industry and how much it opens up possibilities for me and my passion personally. Um, one of our 40 plus flashcard series is Humanoid 40 plus, which is the basic study of human anatomy along with that. Also, we have an app called Humanoid Air Out Plus, which allows users to augment the both female and male, human, and in the interactive six organs in life size. I say the target users for those are children aged seven to 14. So we, we, use, we utilize the basis of this program to do a pilot project. It was a few years back on a fetus study in interactive AR, um, a few years back in collaboration with a, a, a university in later uh, in the years, much recently we participated in what was the beginning of a massive research in collaboration with Queen Mary University in London and Ideas Foundation to develop an AR tool for university students and educators on regen regenerative medicine focusing on modeling diseases during federal development. This was a meaningful lesson for me, I considering the tip of this project brought to light just how much women can empower women and save women in the future. Um, Another case is also a commercial project we did for the UK Space Agency. So we developed a mobile app for them called AR Adventure in Space. It gives users um, and the target market is children um, and young adults the experience of being in turn in the International Space Station. So there's um, you can create a badge, choose your avatar, gender, and you're good to go. You can experience the app. It gives you a mission log from time to time for you to complete your internship. And there is a range of career quiz, so you can learn about the variety of career options in the space industry, apart from being an astronaut. And, you know, female can also be included in that um, sector, too. Um, so this was well over four years ago, and yet the impact is still relevant to this day, considering so many entertaining educational topics you can amplify using AR and VR. And the other perspective is, in general, our 40 plus flashcards and the apps itself through all the years of its establishment it has helped a lot of mothers. Um, it, we don't really touch base on a very strict STEM curriculum, but we do um, utilize the, the technology to create and offer lesson um, learning tools for households too. So now that you know, the early childhood education fee has risen so much recently that that gap year, actually a lot of um, parents skip because, you know, you can usually go straight to primary school these days because it's very expensive. Um, it's expensive here. I can't imagine how much it costs now in Europe and in the U.S., for example. And 
this fills the gap a little bit. And um, another example for the connection that we sh I was very, very um, grateful to have also with Dr. Morris. I'm pretty sure some of you here are, fam are familiar with her. She's killing it out there. She's making it so well these days. I've, I've been seeing that, I'm so glad. Um, she came by to our booth in AWE um, last year or two years, I, I should say. And um, yeah, she brought that book of the Seth Can Do All Things, um, her autistic um, son and wanted to work with us to create, you know, an AR storytelling book because, you know, it helps his, her son learn very easily and um, in a much more interactive and visual way, which, you know, um, children with special needs could really benefit from. Um, and also a few of feedbacks that we have from, you know, parents using our products is that, you know, their kids also, some kids with special needs learn how to speak the first time because of the app and like how, you know, the, the features help them to go through the day, keeping them busy, making them learn things through visuals. If I can just uh, wrap, wrap this up, um, this first question, the second question, I have uh, some answers that I think will tie everything up in a nice little bow. Um, and speaking to uh, some folks earlier about the importance of storytelling, it just reminds me, well, with One Health Lessons, we educate to empower. We educate to move people to take action uh, in order to protect communities with health risks, right? And so one of the last webinars that we gave in 2022 actually took place in Iran and talking about empowering women, right? majority of the audience was female. Um, and so we break barriers, we break cultural barriers through technology. It's regardless of what's going on with governments around the world, we are people and we wanna relate with each other and we wanna learn from each other and we wanna empower each other to be the best we can possibly be. Now, certainly depending on where we are on this planet, electricity is not a given, right? Um, I mean, forget about natural disasters. There are countries that have rollouts, right? Rolling blackouts. And this is totally acceptable. <laughs> yes, Alex in South Africa is raising her hand right there. Um, you know, and this is just something that we, moving forward, if we're really passionate about leadership and on a global scale, we have to take that into account and think about how can technology overcome such limitations? Because we want equality, right? We want equity. Um, so maybe moving forward, we can we can talk about that. And um, I think it's important to think about, you know, regardless of where you are on this planet, I think we can all start to build relationships and learn from each other and grow from each other in order to support our own communities and our own families. So back to you, Hassan. I think that's a great segue into my third question. Um, I love how you talked about um, being imaginative, uh, using emerging technology. And I know Geetha, Twitha, um, Wadua, um, Allison, you all spoke to um, that and even mentioned some interventions that are really creative. So with that said, how do you all see emerging technologies really promoting innovation and really promoting um, creativity uh, for women leaders? I, I'm going to take a first stab at, at this. Also. So for me, the sky really is the limit. We, we, are, we haven't even really started to enter the parabolic curve of what is possible with this new technology. And whether we're talking augmented reality and metaverse, to uh, blockchain-based systems, to, to changes in the way that we actually do business and we interact with one another. Um, we really, every day there are new use cases that are coming out and, and are, are being explored and being released. So honestly, I think our only barriers, our own, our own imagination, our own willingness to try something new. And by the same token, our own willingness to make a call saying, is this working? Yes, great, we keep doing it. Or is this not working? Okay, fine, shelve this, move on to the next thing. Um, because I think, especially when you're talking within emerging tech in uh, technology that is still 
busy finding out where it's going to be because in what this looks like in 10 years time is very different from what it will look like by the end of this year. Um, it's very different to what it looks like today. You, you have what you are defined as much by what you say no to as what you say yes to. So, I mean, my, my advice for every woman leader out there is educate yourself on what is out there from a technology perspective. Decide whether the emerging tech is the right technology for you, because it might not be. There might be a better solution. It's not a panacea. It will not solve every problem. Um, but by the same token, start seeing what it can do. We've heard some amazing cases from the uh, augmented reality teams on this on this panel. Um, we've, we've got similar ones we've done here in South Africa around soft skills training, literally called Gita in your shoes. Um, and doing amazing things with transparency and identity and whether that's metaverse identity or self-sovereign self identity. There's so much that can be done. And it's just up for us to take that step and to work with our communities, with our businesses, whether they're our own or whether we are employees, to say, hey, step through the door. The technology is there. People are waiting for us to bring it to them. And if we don't do it, well, the white, the white men that uh, Microsoft and Facebook probably will. Anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, Alex is spot on. I mean, education is key. I mean, especially to getting more people into the space, to, to breaking down the barrier of, I mean, uh, to, the, to entry. I think that there is such a buildup of, of what, you know, what is being built uh, that it creates kind of, um, you know, like this, uh, so many people are, you know, like trying to define, define it and prove that it's real, but we are so, so early still. And this is the perfect opportunity for people to get in and, and to affect change. And, um, you know, like I think that, that what we're currently seeing because we are so early is just different silos of disruption. So we're seeing it with, you know, blockchain technology, we're seeing it with AI. And these are all silos. And, you know, going back to what Gita was saying about these concentric circles, I mean, like the more that we educate ourselves about all of these things and find out you know, like where we can push into, the more we can connect with these experiences and the more that we can bring this idea of these new emerging technologies uh, to life because they're, they're still very much at the, at the early stages. What I think is incredible about this panel is that I don't know that any of us would have said that we started our careers purely in tech. Um, or with emerging tech and what we've done. Um, I certainly feel like I'm an accidental tech person. Um, and I realize that I probably can't say that anymore because I'm doing all this incredible work with VR and, and the work that we're doing, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's for training, whether it's about bringing this whole sense of diversity, equity, and inclusion and belonging to people, right? But I think about Wadua, I don't know that you would have said I was a tech person when you first started, right? I don't know, Alex, you would have felt the same. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know you well enough yet, right? But I think all of us, I don't know that we started there. Um, and what's incredible is that it's already created an opportunity for women because this whole panel exists um, where we have this opportunity where we've all been brought into tech because of our passions and the other areas that we've been into. And so when I think about Alex talking about education, Wadua, your reinforcement of that, I completely agree because there's all these new opportunities where, again, I think of tech as the tool. It's the, it's the method that we are still delivering those classic approaches that we've been working towards, not to say that they're antiquated, but we're bringing those experiences forward which brings more opportunities for women to see those opportunities. And that tech isn't something that just happens in a back room and it's a whole bunch of servers, right? Tech is front forward for all of us, whether you're a creative, whether you're a commercial marketer, whether you're a finance person, whether you're a creator and an innovator, right? There's so many different ways to incorporate tech not thinking about it as tech alone, right? It's really about how does tech enable me be, to be successful? And there's so many cool ways to do that today. And I, again, I'm an accidental tech person and I love it. It's fantastic. And I'm so great to, so thankful to meet this incredible group of women who have also found their way into tech, probably from all different directions. Talk about silos. Somebody mentioned breaking down silos. I mean, that's one health, but we're breaking down silos in order to help the health of the communities, right? That's all the point of one health. And so when I train people, I mentor interns and interns come from whole lots of backgrounds. They could be technologists and engineers. They could be law students. They could be veterinary students, medical students, doesn't matter what they are. 
but I say three things. I want to make sure these interns know three things, and I think it applies here today, so I'll share them. Number one, stay curious. Number two, ask, ask, ask. Ask somebody who's not from your niche. Learn from other people. And number three, speak up. I mean, we're here as representatives of women leaders, and I'm grateful to be here. We are all here to speak up, and we want to encourage everybody to speak up and share their voice because everybody's voice is important. Um, anyone have anything to add before we go into the last question? Um, Deborah, thank you for that. I think um, it's really important for us to to feel empowered and actually act on that empowerment. Allison, go right ahead. I was just going to add that, you know, you kind of ask, you know, does emerging technologies actually, you know, sort of promote or enable more innovation and um, technology, you know, technological findings within the space. And I think that, you know, one of, I, I, I did a recent start, I was reading an article recently, which kind of spoke about critical thinking and creativity, kind of like really, um, working hand in hand, but creativity thinking actually goes beyond the context of what critical thinking actually allows us to do, you know, that ability to be imaginative, intuitive, you know, spontaneous, inventive, all of the things that if I'm correct, I think you're scientifically, women are actually fantastic at. And I think we have to give ourselves some kudos for what we are great at and we just get underestimated. And I think within the innovative and technological advancement uh, space, it's incredible. I mean, at Flossfest, we particularly focus, i.e., on encouraging more girls to go into the design sector. So your 3D modeling within the VR space, just because, you know, all of those things that we're trying to build are really key to building prototypes for our day to the everything that surrounds us, the chair that I'm sitting on, someone needs to design it. And interestingly, interestingly, you know, often we kind of look and think, oh, we are lagging behind. I had wrote it on a piece of paper. I've just misplaced it, but it's something, don't quote me on it, but it's a really impressive sort of uh, stats that sort of speak about women uh, in design almost about 47% and men at about 48 point something percent, which is quite amazing. So the gap, has really narrowed. So there are spaces where we are really going in and commanding our space and commanding to be rep uh, represented. And I think that I can't imagine uh, a time beyond or beyond the uh, metaverse gaining momentum when this would have been possible. So I honestly give credit to this space that we're in where we can see women actually be more ambitious. You can create and you can share and you can imagine what you want to present. There's an opportunity to actually be our very own selves. So, you know, where we normally go into offices where you're too loud, you're too aggressive, I can be anything that I want to be within, within this new technological space and make no apologies for it. And the avatars are really amazing. You know, I, if, you don't, if you don't mind, I know I've spoken a little bit much, but I just wanted to go back to, you know, when you're talking about barriers and what um, technology allows us to do. One of my most poignant moments of coming into this uh, era was uh, my first ever experience actually of going into metaverse was on Decentraland. And he was sometime last year, uh, the back of it. And there was the first marathon. I don't know if anybody remembers it. And what was so poignant is I was reading people's comments later on. And it was somebody who was disabled, wheelchair bound, being able to do something that you cannot do right now. But as, uh, you know, what I was saying is that it's actually it's being twined, isn't it? And so there's a whole lot of take for good things that are coming out of emerging technologies. The ability for me to walk in and be anybody, my color does not matter. My religion does not matter. My geography, where I am, does not matter. And as I sit on this panel, it's incredible. I come in with absolutely different skills to everybody else. But I also feel that when it comes to building, I think I can add my two cents and we can build something phenomenal. And that is the power of collaborative, technological, innovative thinking. Thank you. No, I think this is a great segue um, into our last question. But before we get into our last question, I want to encourage all who are in the audience um, watching this 
encourage you to put any questions you may have in the chat. Um, we may have a little bit of time to answer any questions you may have. And while you do that, I'll go into the last um, question um, for the panelists. In what ways do you see emerging technologies really shaping the future of leadership and management for women? Um, especially when you're talking about education and training for women for leadership roles and also the culture of mentorship and, and, and advocacy and support for women using emerging technology. That's open to anyone. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll I'll just start with um, the fact that um, I, I mean I think it's it's partially about the new technologies, but you know as somebody who's older who has found myself in tech, um, you know I I mean like accidentally as well. I, I think that you know uh, it's important mentorship and and sponsorship actually you know of of the new the next generations coming into the space is so important. Uh, I mean because. Again, going back to what I was saying about breaking down those those old paradigms, and um, I, I coming into the space, I, I I played small. I didn't have a voice. I didn't put forth my ideas because I didn't feel like my ideas were as good as the the men standing next to me who were very vocal and um, who didn't hold back their you know their enthusiasm or their ideas or their voices. And I think that, you know, like, uh, you know, like, I think it's super important as we're looking at the technologies just to look at the way that we conduct ourselves. And, and as people, you know, especially who are, you know, uh, in this next chapter of their lives, bringing those things that we've learned into these spaces and into the way that these new technologies and spaces are being built. I think to, to add to that, Rudu, I love that, but I think it, it normalizes it. Um, seeing, having a conference like this that it, it comprises exclusively of, of female voices in this space, um, having so many more women entering this space, I love the way it normalizes it. Um, my kids are six and eight. Uh, and I mean, well, yes, they're not particularly impressed with the fact that, you know, mom is an IT executive, um, but it's normal for them. And they are the ones who, I mean, they, you know, they were already the ones saying the metaverse is the better verse. But, uh, but really, the, the next generation, whether it's uh, whether it's our, our sort of kids who are still quite young, or or the the people in their in their teens, in their twenties, so the, the the Gen Z, they're already in the space. They're using this technology. They expect to use it. But seeing us as leaders in the space, it's normal for them, which means that. There's less of that barrier we've spoken about for people to think, can I do this? No, I can't possibly do this. I, I lack the um, equipment. Um, they rather say, okay, well, you know, we, 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 see, we see Hasa and Gita and Chitra and all of the other people on this panel. I can do that too. I can do it better. And that's what we want. Yeah, it's the boundless space. I mean, like thinking about when the internet made its breakthrough, it was we didn't think it was going to be an everyday thing. Like we almost, I mean, I think couldn't live without it at this point. Um, and we're not there yet, especially in the Southeast Asia. I feel like the way metaverse kicks off in the U.S. and in the Europe and in Southeast Asia, the way our um, culture also shaped the consumerism and the way, um, you know, people use devices and, you know, the interactions and the level of interactions also. I'm just very excited to see the kind of opportunities and um, like doors that are opening up later on, looking at now, um, like how much progressive it is. And I also cannot wait to have a living proof of metaverse being used to run businesses. And that's kind of will will shift the way people do social commerce, do retails and all of that would be new jobs and new occupations for women as well. Um, and I kind of like the idea of the semi-anonymity in the internet and in, in the metaverse as well. Like you can literally be whoever you want to be, um, not necessarily to hide who you really are, but to sort of have your own digital identity and you're not letting anything else define you on that, in that space as well. Um, and I think we're going to have to end it here. I just want to thank 
all of our panelists today. Um, you all are amazing. Some of the key, key themes that I heard were imagination, were um, uh, like ownership and really um, being able to use your voice to actually do and create change that we need to see. And then also normalizing um, what we see in the metaverse to actually do it in the real world and, and making that connection as well too. So I wanna thank you all. I'm sorry we could not get to any questions, but um, if you can continue this conversation amongst yourselves or in other metaverses. Uh